Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're going to be looking at the Ryzen 5 5600X, except this time we're looking at the stock cooler with a voltage offset. Now, if you watched my last video, then you know that the Wraith Stealth cooler is sort of able to keep up with the 5600X, at least in an open test bench. Though once it does hit about 80 degrees Celsius, we see the clock speeds on the 5600X dipping down a little bit. Now, the idea behind this video is that if we drop the voltage on the CPU down a little bit through a uh, voltage offset or even by just locking in a manual voltage, we may be able to keep the clock speeds a little bit higher uh, and actually hopefully right up there with the max boost that these uh, clocks normally see right up there about 4.6 gigahertz. And because the voltage is lower, we might actually be able to help out the Wraith Stealth cooler and keep this CPU cool even while it's running at 4.6 gigahertz. So that's the theory behind the video. So let's go ahead and take a look at how a couple of different voltage configurations worked out. Now, before we get started, in case you missed my last video on the Wraith Stealth Cooler, that will be linked down below or probably in a card or something, but you should totally hit that subscribe button while you're down there so you don't miss any more of my coverage because I will be continuing to look at the Ryzen 5600X as we go forward here in the next couple of weeks. Now, before we could run any sort of voltage offsets or manual voltage inputs, the first thing I had to do was test out in Cinebench uh, what it does at stock. So everything is set at stock except the uh, XMP profile is uh, being run for the memory itself. So the memory is running at 3200 megahertz. And the way I tested this out was to first get a reading at uh, idle temperatures when you first run Cinebench R20, we get a score. And then after 10 minutes where this Wraith Stealth Cooler is fully saturated with heat, I took the second score. So we have the first score and then the 10th minute score as well. So the first voltage change I tested out was running the CPU at a set 1.1 volts. And at first glance in Ida64, this thing actually looked like it was gonna pan out really, really well because at 1.1 volts, even under an extended stress test, the CPU actually maintains its clock speed pretty much the entire time. So we are seeing with a limited voltage, the Wraith Stealth Cooler can actually keep up with the 5600X. However, where that doesn't bear out is in the Cinebench runs. And uh, I'll come right back to that here in a second. So the next voltage change that I made was running the voltage with an offset instead of a set voltage with the idea being, of course, you get the advantage of a voltage that's gonna step up and step down with the load put on the CPU, but you're still saving voltage by running that negative offset. So in my testing, I ran a negative 0.09 volt offset. I couldn't quite get to a negative 0.1 voltage offset. I would see crashes in Cinebench at that negative offset. So negative 0.09. And once again, the Cinebench scores actually pan out in favor of running everything at stock. And we'll go ahead and look at that graph now. So in the blue here on the chart, you see everything just set to auto with voltage. And the first run in Cinebench R20 worked out to 4318. And of course, that would fluctuate a little bit uh, up or down depending on if you repeat the test. But this was a repeatable test where I was right in that neighborhood with everything at stock except the memory being set with its XMP profile. And then after 10 minutes of running R20, we see a 4263 score, which is still very respectable. Obviously, we do drop a little bit of performance with that score, but we're still getting a really solid score there. Now, where it gets interesting is with these negative offsets or the uh, set voltage just being lower. With the negative 0.09 offset, our first run, that's with a cold CPU just running at idle temperature, so we don't have to worry about temperature whatsoever there. We actually start with a lower score than the automatic voltage after 10 minutes and it's being fully saturated with heat. And at the negative offset after 10 minutes, we see a slight dip, though I would call that probably within the margin of error there. And the results are even worse for the set manual voltage at 1.1 volts under the first run conditions. We saw a 3932, and after 10 minutes, the score was 3954. So again, this is a very repeatable test. And the reason that score doesn't change any is the clock speed isn't changing any because the temperatures are hovering around 70 degrees Celsius. So because the temperature is well under control, we see absolutely no change in clock speed. But of course, the problem is that even with that reduced temperature load, and with the clock speeds being reported at exactly what they are under the auto settings, 
we're still seeing lower Cinebench scores. And it wasn't just Cinebench either. I ran a couple of other benchmarks like the CPU-Z benchmark. I ran a couple benchmarks in IDA64 and they all came out the exact same where the auto voltages were getting you higher scores. So I'm not really 100% sure what's going on there. Uh, I talked to my brother a little bit about this and he even mentioned that this was a problem with Zen 2 as well, where messing with the voltage actually resulted in lower scores in benchmarks as well. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on there, but if you do know, please let us know in those comments down below. But really that does roll us right over into the conclusion as to whether you should undervolt your Ryzen 5600X if you're running the Stealth Cooler. And uh, based on my testing, I would actually say no. And the simple reason for that is 80 degrees Celsius uh, is not an ideal temperature, but at the same time, you're not gonna kill your CPU running it at auto voltages, auto clocks, everything just being set to auto. 80 degrees Celsius is not gonna kill the CPU and you are outright getting better performance with that setup than you are with uh, running manual offsets or uh, just a set manual voltage altogether. Now, it is worth noting that this may change depending on what motherboard you actually put this CPU with. So there is definitely an asterisk that goes with this and you should absolutely do a little bit of testing yourself if you're interested in this sort of thing and you are running the Stealth Cooler. But if you're getting similar results to this where your benchmarks are going down a little bit with those offsets or those manual voltages, then it's really not worth messing around with uh, the voltage because you're getting better performance at auto. If on the other hand, temperatures are your number one concern and you really don't like the CPU running at 80 degrees all the time if it's been under an all core load for an extended period of time, then you may wanna play around with setting either a manual voltage or an offset voltage to give you a little bit more thermal headroom. But at the end of the day, I would leave that up to each person individually to determine whether or not that performance hit that you may be taking with the voltage offsets are worth it uh, for recovering some of that thermal headroom. But the easiest solution is obviously uh, grab yourself about a $30, $35 cooler, something like a Hyper uh, 212 Evo, and you're set to go, or something like a Freezer 33 or a Freezer 34. Any of those coolers would handle this CPU just fine because it's not really a hot CPU. But those are just my thoughts on the limited testing I have available to me. I do wanna hear what you guys think. Is this something that you've played around with in the past, especially with previous Ryzen generations, or even if you have your hands on one of these 5000 series processors? Let me know all your thoughts in those comments down below. And of course, if you like the video and you wanna see more like it, give this video a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things are uh, very helpful to this channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.